This is Steve Northworthy. I'm going to demonstrate the use of pianoscope in tuning perfect twelfths on the piano. My voice, by the way, is interfering with the, uh, the tuning process, but I have to talk to explain this. A perfect twelfth is a ratio of three to one in frequency, because an octave is two to one, a perfect fifth is three to two, so a perfect twelfth would be three to one. Pianoscope calculates the inharmonicity of the entire range of the piano and calculates the ideal offsets based on its inharmonicity. And so it does the calculations for you ahead of time and all you have to worry about is then tuning to that idealized inharmonicity frequency. I'm going to start in B flat 2. And the idealized frequency is 116.83 hertz, which is 3.5 cents flatter than the idealized value that would be based on A442. I'm tuning my piano to A442. You can see what's actually generated here is about minus three cents flat after the decay. And pretty close to zero in the initial attack. Now I like to tune the piano more to the initial attack, which is unstable because there's a frequency modulation going on on the initial attack of the piano. And the frequency modulation settles down after a few seconds, but the human ear psychoacoustically hears the initial attack more than it hears the sustained value. And I can't tell you the number of piano tuners I've tried to convince that the psychoacoustics dictate we should have more tuning on the initial attack rather than the steady state decay. A lot of piano tuners will play a note over and over and over again to kind of keep it in the initial attack mode. But I think that we, um, that's one way of doing it. And you can see we're getting deviation plus and minus a quarter cent above and below. If we just hit, hit it one time, we would get. You can see that initial attack, I've tuned it to be about maybe a half a cent sharp if it's played by itself as one note, but if I keep repeating it, it's maybe a quarter set sh sharp, but it quickly decays to zero the way I've tuned the three strings together here. Um, if I go to the twelfth above that would be F4. the way I've tuned this is it's kind of averaging a, about a quarter cent sharp on the attack and settling down about a quarter cent flat on the decay. It might be a little bit too flat, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these one note at a time, go to the middle string of F4, and take that F4 and... Just a tiny little bit. Let's go to the right string, play a four right string with a mute. It's pretty close. I like it. I like it. The initial attack to be like a quarter cent sharp or so, um, and that's sort of a target. That's a little on the flat side, the left string. So let's pull the left string up a little bit. There it is, and now well, the results should be cleaner. Now notice when you play the three strings together, the result is about a quarter cent flatter than any one of them by themselves. This is kind of a known phenomenon. The piano technicians kind of talk privately amongst themselves, but this is a known phenomenon, um, but not talked about enough because of the coupling mechanism of all three strings together. That coupling reduces the FM, but it also flattens the result. So let's take that result. Let's go back to the middle string on F4. Pull it up just a tiny little bit. Okay, let's pull the right string up a tiny little bit. Left string, do the same thing. There. Now let's put them together. 
Notice the initial attack is about a quarter cent sharp, it decays to about a quarter cent flat after the initial attack. Now that F4 is where I want it. Now let's play the B flat 2 and F4, a frequency of 3 to 1 ratio or a twelfth apart. That's a very solid, stable, beatless attack. Very clean sound. If you tune this the entire piano, they'll go half a step to, to the, the B2 and the F sharp 4, the C3 and the G4, and so on and so forth. And you tune the piano that way, you play it, then you listen to the result. And if the, listen, if the initial result sounds real clean to the ear, it means the initial attacks are very much 3 to 1 frequency are coherent, it sounds coherent to the ear, and then when you actually play music on the piano and tune it all that way, everything sounds cleaner and better and brighter.